Hello everyone, I am uh, Dr. Prakash, Professor in uh, UPES Dehradun. My presentation is on concepts of flight stability and control, that is to discuss the stability and control aspects of flying vehicles. As you can see, uh, there are various categories of aircraft that exist and uh, we can categorize them into like rotary wing aircraft, a helicopter, gyrocopter or fixed wing aircraft like conventional airplanes, what we see regularly. We can also categorize them into stable aircraft, unstable aircraft or uh, heavier than aircraft, lighter than air aircraft. Even we have hybrid cases which can be mixed of uh, two categories or two or more categories. So even parachute airships also are part of uh, aerial vehicle. The stability can be divided into st stable, statically stable, statically unstable and uh, statically neutral stability. And uh, aircrafts, depending on if they are able to return back to original position after their disturbance, they are uh, stable aircraft, statically unstable aircraft, and they are able to not able to come back to original position after they get disturbed from their original position so they are statically unstable and uh, neutral aircraft there is no need uh, means they can uh, even uh, uh, fly in the same manner even if they are disturbed but at some other uh, orientation like this airship can uh, even fly in similar manner even if it gets uh, tilted by 90 degree or even it uh, tilts by 180 degree upside down it will not affect its flight behavior. So statically stable uh, aircraft can uh, further be subdivided into locally stable aircraft means they are uh, otherwise uh, unstable uh, overall but uh, for small region they are uh, stable and they can be lightly unstable aircraft means uh, the overall aircraft is a uh, stable behavior but uh, at uh, some uh, small region during its flight it is showing unstable behavior and uh, highly stable aircraft can be those aircraft which have uh, a very high uh, stability even uh, they can uh, fly in the stable manner even at extreme uh, flying conditions. So parachute is one of the example of flying vehicle which uh, has pendulum stability and uh, it uh, is very stable as compared to other aircraft whereas these fighter aircraft at low speeds they are uh, unstable and uh, they uh, become uh, stable when they increase their uh, speed. So at higher speed they are mostly stable. Now why stability? As you can see in this uh, ship vessel being uh, tilted. So if uh, we can see uh, there is a metacentric height here which governs the stability of a uh, floating vessel. So if uh, metacentric height which is the uh, point uh, of cross section of uh, center line of the body and uh, vertical line passing through buoyancy and uh, if that metacentric height is uh, above the center of gravity point so then distance gm is uh, positive is greater than zero and then vessel will be stable. For some case if we put weight on more of the weight on the upper deck then uh, the gravity or the center of gravity of the vehicle will rise so in that case if center of gravity is higher and the 
metacentric height is uh, lower side so then uh, the distance between g and m is uh, less than zero and then vehicle the same vehicle becomes unstable Prior to this we have uh, in aerospace aircraft neutral point and uh, center of gravity g so a neutral point represented by n so if center of gravity is ahead and neutral point is behind then uh, that airplane is uh, stable that means distance gn is uh, greater than 0 and what happens when the uh, airplane is stable so if there is a nose up uh, disturbance so airplane automatically uh, becomes nose down similarly if uh, the center of gravity is behind and neutral point is in a forward direction then uh, the distance between g and n is uh, less than zero so the airplane becomes unstable so in that case if there is a disturbance in nose up direction then uh, aircraft will become further nose up due to unstable So why do we need statically stable airplane because uh, statically stable airplane uh, helps in prevention of uh, toppling of aircraft that is we uh, generally call it as divergence of the airplane in longitudinal direction lateral direction or in yawing direction so moreover this statically stable airplane uh, they provide comfortable ride to the passenger so that's why uh, people look for uh, statically stable airplane but there is a difficulty of controlling uh, the stable airplane because uh, of slow response of these airplanes uh, if we give control input so more stable the airplane slow response we will get from the airplane so in case of unstable airplane then we have unstable airplane which help in uh, quick turn and maneuver so fighter aircraft pilot uh, would prefer uh, quick maneuvering over uh, comfortable ride during uh, wartime situation so that's why fighter aircraft they are statically unstable so in aerospace we generally measure the distance of center of gravity from uh, nose that is xcg and uh, distance of neutral point from nose that is xnp so if uh, the distance of neutral point is more than the distance of uh, center of gravity so that means neutral point is behind or cg is ahead so that configuration is stable configuration and if cg is behind then it is vice versa so you can see this neutral point is very important and uh, if there is an uh, airplane now whose uh, uh, distance of uh, cg from nose is uh, more as compared to distance of neutral point from nose then that airplane is termed as unstable so what happens as your angle of attack increases the pitching moment also increases so with the pitching moment coefficient if we uh, get from moment by dividing dynamic pressure which is half rho v square and the planform area s so if we get a graph between uh, pitching moment coefficient and the angle of attack so we get the positive slope graph if cg that is uh, center of gravity location uh, distance uh, from the nose is less as compared to the distance of neutral point that means neutral point is behind cg is ahead so that airplane is stable so what will happen as the angle of attack increases the pitching moment negative 
value is higher so what happens the slope of cm versus angle of attack it decreases with increasing angle of attack so negative slope is stable that uh, cm versus alpha graph negative slope tells us the airplane is stable and if cg is just exactly equal to neutral point then it so along with the uh, positive and negative slope of the air airplane which tells us whether the airplane is uh, unstable or uh, stable with the negative slope being uh, stable and uh, positive slope being unstable the equilibri equilibrium point b is also important for us so if the graph uh, is a negative that means the uh, airplane is stable we should be able to get an equilibrium angle of attack in positive way so that we get when the intersect of the cm versus alpha graph cm not is greater than 0 if this is intercept is less than 0 so we get the equilibrium angle of attack at negative alpha so that uh, aircraft uh, has to fly at negative angle of attack and that is uh, not possible now if we talk about dynamic stability then uh, Again, we have uh, neutral dynamic stability, stable dynamic stability, or unstable dynamic stability behavior of airplane. So, if the disturbance of the airplane uh, increases over a period of time, or if it is, uh, let's say, stable, uh, same amplitude of the disturbance is same over a period of time, so that is neutrally stable airplane in dynamic stability sense. And if the disturbance of the airplane, uh, the amplitude of the disturbance reduces over a period of time, then that airplane is called dynamically stable or having positive dynamic stability. And if the disturbance increases over a period of time, then that is an unstable case. So generally we study uh, stability uh, using uh, vibration equation and finding out its natural frequency and damping ratio and uh, plotting the solution over imaginary and real part. So if we get the solution of some uh, dynamic equation of any airplane in the left half side so that uh, airplane is uh, stable and if we get the solution of this equation whatever equation of the airplane in this form and uh, here when we get uh, its roots plotted on the right hand side so that airplane is unstable dynamically in longitudinal motion of the airplane we have two uh, different uh, um, motions uh, dynamic motions one is long period motion that is called uh, fugoid motion and this uh, actually uh, is uh, accompanied by a gradual, gradual interchange of potential and kinetic energy uh, about the equilibrium altitude and air speed. So what happens, uh, the airplane uh, gains height, altitude and uh, uh, loses altitude and then again gains altitude. In that process, the speed of the aircraft also uh, reduces at high altitude and uh, increases at low altitude point. So there is a interchange of potential and kinetic energy with altitude and air speed. Now there is another uh, dynamic motion shown by uh, airplane and that is actually uh, oscillation within the oscillation. So if we have fugoid oscillation within the fugoid we will see small oscillations and th those are uh, short period oscillations. So in that uh, oscillation mainly uh, there is a change in angle of attack whereas in fugoid motion uh, the angle of attack remains constant. So this motion is uh, for short duration so that is why this is called short period 
motion of the longitudinal dynamics. If we talk about lateral directional dynamics, then uh, if the airplane has uh, uh, like directional divergence, means uh, it is directionally unstable, so it will uh, diverge from its original path. And uh, this is because of having insufficient directional stability. And there is another uh, mode of uh, di uh, instability in uh, directional mode that is spiral divergence. In that case, what happens? Uh, the directional stability is uh, high, but the lateral stability is not adequate. So this is combination of lateral and directional stability which results in spiral divergence of the airplane, which is unstable dynamic behavior. Then we have lightly damped oscillatory motion of the airplane called Dutch roll mode. So here we get oscillatory motion in lateral directional motion of the airplane at low frequency. Coming to uh, directional stability, the it is uh, generally we fix the aircraft axis uh, in nose direction we have x axis and uh, on uh, sideways we have y axis and uh, pointing downward we have z axis so it is a stability about z axis generally we say and uh, actually it is the tendency of the airplane to return to its equilibrium condition after there is some disturbance in yawing motion so what happens the aircraft uh, the stable aircraft tries to move into the direction of wind so if there is a direction of wind from this side and then the stable uh, directionally stable airplane will turn into the direction of the wind so basically uh, we, we uh, get yawing moment similar to pitching moment with the angle of the wind from the sidewise we call it as a, uh, angle beta or side slip angle so we, if we get the positive slope of cn and uh, beta for any aircraft that aircraft is directionally stable if the uh, cn uh, beta value is negative that is direction unstable airplane now what happens uh, if we have a, a propeller aircraft and the location of propeller also affects the directional stability so if it is a uh, this is a pusher type aircraft so in this case this airplane the pusher type airplane are directionally stable because the yawing moment generated turns the aircraft into the direction of wind whereas uh, this is called uh, generally conventional uh, propeller tractor type so he, this leaves airplane in uh, away from the wind direction this is directionally unstable propeller location now if we talk about directional control the rudder helps in directional control of the airplane so rudder is a small flap and like surface hinge to the vertical tail so if we deflect the rudder one side it creates lift on the other side and then creates a yawing moment about cg there are some rudder requirements the rudder should be uh, powerful enough when airplane is trying to bank it actually experiences the adverse yaw means opposite yaw motion so the rudder has to take care and overcome this adverse yaw so that if we want to turn the airplane in some direction it should not turn in the other direction and in case of uh, landing if there is a crosswind uh, on the runway so due to directional stability the airplane turns into the direction of wind so 
resultant wind will be coming from uh, one of the side of the runway but uh, airplane has to finally touch with the nose pointing to the direction of runway so finally the rudder has to be powerful enough to keep the airplane on the runway direction also there can be a case uh, during takeoff or landing if there is a engine failure then uh, there is uh, yawing moment experienced by the airplane so the rudder should be powerful enough to make the aircraft nose pointing into the direction of uh, runway even if some engine has failed moreover uh, the spin uh, behavior of the airplane when the airplane enters into a tight spin or a flat spin so uh, in order to come out of this spin the rudder is powerful should be powerful enough so that the airplane is able to come out of this spin now coming to lateral stability it is the tendency uh, of the airplane to return to wing level position so if the airplane has banked on one of the side because of some reason then what happens the downward going uh, wing experiences upward wind so the upward wind increases the lift on the down going wing and whereas uh, upward up going wing experiences downward wind velocity so that decreases the lift on up going wing so this increase and in lift creates opposite rolling motion so the airplane is able to come back to its original position on its own so this is called dihedral effect and the airplane is literally stable also airplane is given dihedral angle that is the span wise angle from the horizontal so this also provides lateral stability to the air if we see uh, wing location the high wing or low wing so the high wing is providing a stabilizing effect because when the airplane tilts sideways and there is a cross flow so the windward direction windward wing experiences increase in uh, lift and the other side uh, experiences decrease in lift so this helps in returning back wing level position of the airplane whereas if the, if it is a low wing configuration the windward wing experiences decrease in lift because of downward deflection of the wind and uh, other side increases the lift so this air, this condition makes it unstable and it the airplane further rolls some of the airplanes the wing tip effect on the lateral stability so if there is a wing tip which is uh, uh, slanting up or if it then it is a stable it provides a lateral stability effect to the airplane that means the wing uh, will become again back to level position and if it is uh, slanted down uh, the wing tip then it provides unstable effect to the wing so you will see mostly airplane uh, wing tips having the upward slanted uh, wing tips so this is the airplane which is having uh, directional and uh, lateral uh, stability but uh, it is difficult to control at this position 
is finally pilot decided to abort landing now this airplane because of cross wind is pointing away from the runway direction so the rudder has to be powerful enough so that uh, during uh, touchdown the airplane should be able to turn into the direction of runway so that is why stability and uh, control are very important aspects for any airplane during uh, all flight uh, phases whether take off landing or in cruising mode so with this i would like to thank uh, uh, you for uh, giving me opportunity to talk about on this topic that is uh, stability and uh, control aspect of uh, flying vehicle thank you